friends, welcome to the study. Last week in Genesis 39, we left off with Joseph being placed in the special prison where the king's prisoners were kept. And he found favor there with the prison chief and everything that he did there prospered. Today we start Genesis 40, which comprises a single story, a most profound story of beautiful prophetic imagery. So get ready as we journey through this chapter. Amazing revelations await us. Now we will start at verse 1 of Genesis 40. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. Now this chapter also begins with, and it came to pass, which means that it is an indeterminate length of time, definitely more than just a couple of days or weeks. It is as if to say, in God's time. So in the right length of time, two top-level officers of Egypt had offended the pharaoh, the butler or the cupbearer and the baker. The most likely, the cupbearer or butler and the baker must have done something related to food and drink that the pharaoh was upset about. By the way, the Hebrew word which is translated in English here as offended, is actually translated as sinned. So the verse could have been translated as the butler and the baker sinned against the Pharaoh. So this is an important concept to keep in mind. The reason why they were put in prison is some kind of sin or perceived sin. An interesting nugget. What was the sin of Adam and Eve in the Bible? related to food. Now, through food, sin entered. And we will see how through food and drink, sin and its power will cease to operate. Now, verse 2. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. So the perceived sin of the butler, the cupbearer, and the baker resulted in the Pharaoh being extremely and in with sudden outburst being angry, wrath. This word is linked with wrath. So these two men's actions or perceived actions resulted in the wrath of Pharaoh. Verse 3 And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. So the Pharaoh had the two men, the chief butler and the chief baker, who were dignitaries in the kingdom, placed in the special prison of Potiphar, the captain of the guard, where Joseph was being kept. So Joseph was serving at this special prison. Now until their case would come up before the king, these two would have to stay in this prison. So verse 4. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. Potiphar himself, who is the captain of the guard, empowered Joseph to have access to these two important men, and Joseph served them. The cupbearer and the baker continued for many days and weeks in prison. So this chapter 40 of Genesis deals with Joseph and the two royal officials, the cupbearer and the baker. Now this is the first mention in the Bible of the cupbearer slash butler and the baker. So using the principle of first mention, we can glean their meaning and significance in the rest of the Bible. A cupbearer, historically, was a high-ranking official in charge of serving the king. His responsibility involved specifically serving drink, wine, to the royal table. Now, since kings were concerned about poisoning attempts to assassinate them, cupbearers personally guarded the king's cup and could also taste the drink before serving it to ensure that it was safe. A baker, similarly, is the one that makes food, specifically bread, for the king. He also guards the bread that will be served to the king to prevent any assassination poisoning attempts. So due to their 
unique positions and responsibilities, a cupbearer and baker to the king had to be trustworthy, had to be loyal. At this point, I will highlight four aspects about this unique story in Genesis 40. First, the cupbearer serves primarily wine and the baker serves primarily bread. So together they represent wine and bread. Yes, the elements that Abraham first received from Melchizedek in Genesis 14 verses 18 to 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the Most High God. So Melchizedek was both king and priest. And they represent also the elements of the communion, the Lord's table. In fact, Yeshua, our Mashiach, our Messiah, is from the order of Melchizedek, as we read in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 13 to 17. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. So you see, Judah represents king, and then it's also talking about priesthood, king and priest again. For he testifies, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is citing from Psalm 110 verse 4. The elements of bread and wine are connected with priesthood. A priest serves these to us. The ultimate high priest Yeshua offered us all bread and wine slash grape juice and the same that we as Christians partake of at the Lord's table as the new covenant. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 26. For I have received of the Lord, this is Paul writing, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So bread and wine, the communion elements, show up here in Genesis 40, and the Lord Jesus told us that these show the death of our Lord till he returns. And in this first connection of bread and wine, we see the role of a priest. Which brings us to the second aspect. There are three roles that we will see Joseph play. In early chapters, we have seen Joseph narrating his God-given dreams to his family. The family didn't like what he said. They wanted to put him to death, the brothers specifically. Mark chapter 6 verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honour but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. So Joseph had prophesied, but his family did not believe. They did not honor Joseph or the prophecies. And in fact, we know from the Bible that prophets are stoned to death. Luke 13 verse 34. Now after depicting Joseph as a prophet, we will see him interact in this chapter 40 with the cupbearer and the baker. Remember communion elements, bread and wine. And he ministers to them in interpreting their dreams through the Lord God. So the ministry Joseph performs here is that of a priest. And after this, we will see from Genesis 41 onwards, Joseph will be elevated to the role of a king, second to Pharaoh in charge of the entire land of Egypt, Egypt being a type of the world. Joseph in chapter 40 specifically will depict the role of a priest. And as we have mentioned time and again, Yeshua, the true Messiah, is represented by Joseph's life. Yeshua fulfilled the three offices as prophet, 
priest and king however yeshua's testimony is the spirit of prophecy itself revelation 19:10 he is our great high priest not just a priest he is the great high priest who understands us tempted in every way but without sin and yeshua is also king but not only just a king he is the king of all kings so we see here this parallel between yeshua and joseph once again as both of them fulfilling the threefold ministry the second aspect prophet priest and king then a third aspect we will look at today is from the hebrew language and jewish understanding in jewish understanding the directions right yamin and left smaller matter remember yeshua said cast your net on the right side of the boat and there was a big catch of fish fish representing souls now the right side in jewish mindset represents mercy now the right hand of god does mighty things for us it is at the right hand of our heavenly father that yeshua is seated he is the son of the right hand ben yamin as the right is associated with mercy the opposite side left is associated with judgment now similarly in jewish understanding even the direction of the hebrew letters which side you read from indicate the right versus left mercy versus judgment and mercy always triumphs over judgment now the cup bearer holds a cup for the king in hebrew when you say the cup it is hakos written as follows reading these letters from right to left the letters facing left indicates judgment hence the primary meaning when we say the cup biblically the primary meaning of the cup is of god's wrath there's some kind of judgment that comes upon the same set of letters the same word but we read from left to right that is facing right the side of mercy it gives us the word suka which means booth or temporary shelter in fact the feast of tabernacles or the feast of the in gathering is called in hebrew as sukot it's the plural of suka so being under the suka can protect one from the cup of god's wrath now this is a jewish understanding now similarly the baker provides bread bread in hebrew is lechem written this way yeshua is the bread of life he is the bread broken for us he was judged for us the letters are facing left hence the bread being linked with judgment now the same word spell backwards that is reading from left to right facing right mahal very interestingly this mahal is also the election symbol of the likud party benjamin netanyahu's party in israel and you know what this word means it means forgiveness the bread in reverse facing right is forgiveness you see in the new testament we read give us each day what our daily bread and forgive us our sins so from this hebraic perspective the cup and bread when they both face left they are both under some kind of judgment as we see the cup bearer and the baker now in the prison however in reverse facing right they can result in shelter and forgiveness this is a significant connection that we will revisit as we progress through the dreams of the cup bearer and the baker and finally the fourth aspect from a jewish versus christian or messianic jew perspective now within the jewish perspective another very interesting connection that i found was that jews to this very day on their sabbaths they start with wine and then break bread now i think that is why in this chapter 40 we see that the cup bearer is mentioned first and then the baker wine and then bread but yeshua during the last supper and to this day in our christian faith we start with bread bless and break it and then take the wine or the grape juice bless it so in the old testament with the animal sacrifice format first blood was applied to the door 
and then the lamb was eaten. Right? Exodus chapter 12 verses 5 to 8. So notice also in this context how the lamb was not to be tortured or beaten or whipped. Its blood was drawn out and then it was roasted and eaten. In the new covenant, however, when the ultimate lamb of God, Yeshua, showed up, the bread represented his body and the wine his blood. This he did at the Passover meal to underline the message that he is the ultimate Messiah Passover lamb whose body was marred and beaten to look like the unleavened bread of Passover, the Afikomen. His body took the marks to represent that very special bread which is without yeast, no sin. And then his blood was fully shed for all the sins of the entire world. Now this mirror image is indeed a very interesting multi-layered pattern. We can look at that. So today we looked at verses 1 to 4 of Genesis 40. Stay tuned. Until the next time, grace and peace be multiplied to us all. Maranatha.